welcome to this care collab in my case it is an update i'm happy to say that since we featured my ancelia africana last and had the last care collab several more channels have joined us as part of the care collab crew and specifically today for the ancelia africana their links will be in the description what you see here is my Ancelia Africana, the one that was featured last year. She is a little bit low in the pot because we did a pH test experiment that is featured on another video, which will also be linked in the description. She has been removed from her pot and is going to be repotted in this video because it is high noon. And we'll get to that. If you're so inclined to join me for that, I would very much appreciate it. That's why she is looking the way she is right now not that low in the pot on a normal basis but she is doing very very well growing new roots and has progressed considerably since last year when she was featured the first time however she has not bloomed for me but wait there's more whether i have an ancelia africana that is not blooming for me doesn't want to bloom for me i don't really care i love these orchids they can look as bushy grassy or as straggly as they want to i have some more in July of 2021, a few more joined the collection here at Ninja Orchids. And this is Ancelia Africana Buffalo crossed with Leo. Not that ambitious looking at this point in time, but I have my reasons for having burnt the leaves, as you can see, because I am quite the aggressive orchid acclimator, if you want to call it as such. And I push new orchids to the limit to see how much light they can take and where I need to pull back a little bit. So you can see that this one got a little bit sunburned. But wait, there's more. This one had company by a very ambitious orchid, Ancelia Africana Kenya Mud crossed with self. I say very ambitious because this one is starting two new growths. Whereas Buffalo with Leo here, Lazy Pants, is growing one new growth. So they've got company and I'm starting to lose some leaves. I have some sunburn as per usual. Like I said, I don't hold back when it comes to acclimating orchids. That can take a lot of light. I am here in southern Spain and if there's something I can give them all year round, that is a lot of sun. Also, including in the winter. What they don't like is the fact that I don't have the nice warm temperatures 365 days a year. My temperatures do go down to 14 degrees Celsius in the grow space where they live and over winter during night times, if it is sunny during the day, then they go out and they are exposed to a lot of sunshine. But the star of the show, very, very proud owner of Ancelia Africana Joe crossed with Puff Adder. This orchid is the third in the trio that joined me in July 2021. And I cannot tell you how blown away I am at the fact that this one is blooming on four spikes, not even a year into being in my collection. Another thing that really astounds me is that it is in bloom, even though it is not a tall orchid. All the Ancelias I was just showing, their structures are no taller than 40 centimeters so i may have myself some pygmy ancelias which is just fine with me as long as you're doing what you're doing now and the rest will follow next year i'm very very happy at their status quo at their stoutness they don't need to grow into knee-high bushes even though i have accommodated space should that ever happen it is not the size that matters it's the fact that they bloom that matters to me the other stragglers down here well, they're just going to have to take a book out of Joe Crossed with Puff Adder and understand what is expected of them. But my goodness, am I ever so thrilled to see these blooms here on my patio. This is a beautiful display of exactly the colors that I grew up with when I was living in Kenya. The exoticness is so exquisite. It's beyond description really so i'm not gonna keep talking about it i'm just going to be inserting a lot of stills so that you can see what the colors the characteristics and the markings of these blooms what i do want to bring up and mention is i love the bud forming stage as well when i saw the buds forming on this orchid it reminded me of a seed pod that we have in kenya and i am unable to identify and name that plant but those buds they looked like like seed pods if you were to take them off the plant and rattle them it would form part of a musical instrument when i saw those buds i was 
thrilled to bits. I lost quite a lot of buds at the beginning and I was a little bit concerned that I was maybe only going to get one bloom to bloom out. But once the temperatures really warmed up, all the other buds held their own. Having seen spikes on this one so, so soon, it is very encouraging that hopefully next year these three will follow suit and then we have ourselves a beautiful bushy display of Ancelia Africanas. When it comes to fragrance on these blooms, let me just add that before we go and check out this root ball and pot the other one up. The fragrance here, look, I'm biased. I would say it smells like a musty room similar to a Sologeny Lime Bay. It's, it's like a dust well. If you lived in Kenya or have ever been on safari, you know that all you have in your nose is dust. Everything is dusty, dusty, dusty. Even while you shower, you can't get rid of that fragrance, that scent in your nose. There's just a dusty smell around this orchid. I love it. It just transports me back to my home country. Not saying that this one necessarily bloomed and grew in my country. I wouldn't know it's a cross, but needless to say, the fragrance takes me back to being in that dusty sand-filled car or the windows are open and you break and then the dust catches up with you from behind and all of a sudden you smell that warm dust. That is the fragrance of this orchid. Warm dust. I love it. I'm sure that other people would go, well, um, no, this is not for me. But the memory bank that I have when it comes to this fragrance, I absolutely love it. And my blooming alley is pretty, pretty full of this fragrance, even while perparatas are blooming. She is intense. So that warm dust, even as I stand a meter away from her, it permeates the air. For me, it's just like I am home. I'm back and I am so happy to be able to experience this happening here in southern Spain. All the orchids right now, because they're in active growth, with the exception of the one that we are going to be repotting, I promise we'll get there, but all the orchids right now are getting 300 parts per million of fertilizer. We are a go when it comes to fertilizing. I have two new growths coming on this one. I have growths coming on the ones that are down here. I don't have any new growths coming on our repot candidate here, but the root growth is insane and we are going to encourage that, hence also 300 parts per million. It is not my intention to get these growths to grow, you know, to knee high size. The intention is to make sure that whatever is happening now is being supported by the max maximum fertilizer levels that I put into my pot. Lekka and self-watering can cause mineral buildup on the surface of the pot, especially because I don't have a lot of humidity. So in order to avoid that, I prefer to err on the side of caution with 300 parts per million. But because these guys have started to absorb their reservoir so quickly in the recent two, three weeks, they're getting it almost twice a week. Regular flushes in between, nothing has changed with regards to the care. Flush, fill the reservoir with fertilizer. Soak, if I'm doing a supplemental soak with calcium, magnesium and seaweed, it is a soak of 30 minutes and more. But other than that, it is go time. It is grow time. I cannot be more thrilled and excited about these orchids. So glad that they have pulled through so well, especially, you know, these three that have come from Africa, not just 11 months ago, but also our repot candidate right here, that was only three itty bitty nasty little separated canes when it arrived in my collection in 2020. And it is doing what it is doing. Now all I need to do is see the bloom. So having spoken of our repot candidate so much, if you are so inclined, let's see if we're going to do an inch chop of good roots or if we're going to start to do a fiddle. I have no idea. I haven't thought about it. There's a lot of fern roots you can see right here. There are a lot of fern roots in that root ball. I don't like those little black roots. They don't do anything to hurt the orchid. These guys are vigorous. They can really take abuse, if that's what you want to call it. It's just me. I don't want those little black roots in there. So thank you so much. If you're not going to be watching the repot, I appreciate your time. And everybody else, let's go to the east side patio and let's have a sit down and maybe another chin wag about these beautiful orchids that come from my continent. I'm not trying to be possessive here, but my continent. <laughs> if you stuck around for the repot, thank you very, very much. Let's get this started because look at this. 
Yeah. <laughs> two years. This is two years worth of root growth. You see, I have new roots coming here from the top. If I want to be radical, look at all these root tips coming here. That's always a good thing to note how a root ball behaves. So if you want to get radical, you can actually be a little bit more aggressive and take off the bottom of the root ball. If this were organic media, I would take a saw and just cut the bottom off for about a centimeter and a half to preserve any root tips that are up here. I've got that root down there. I could also just up pot this orchid and put leka around it. So I'm not quite sure at this point in time what exactly I want to do with her. But as I mentioned, I hate, I just ooh, hate these fern roots in here. Uh, it's just a little thing. It's, you know, it, once the orchid is in the pot, I don't see the roots. So, nah, you know, why bother? And that is why I'm sort of like a little bit uh, half and half. But some of these roots are not viable anymore. So, we are going to be taking off a centimeter at the base, all the way across. And seeing as this is clearly organic media, I'm not going to be in any way kind, polite, or gentle about it. My aim is to cut off and get in there, not break my secateurs by cutting through Lekka, but really get this root ball opened up, cleaned up. Even if I do cut into live roots, what I can see down here, it's not all of them that are alive. So it's a good thing now after two years to go in and clean this up and then hopefully with the next two years, maybe three years in a bigger pot, allow her more time and get herself established and not interrupt this process of hopefully getting her to bloom in the coming two years. I'm anticipating next year, but hey, this orchid was just a teeny tiny little set of three canes, nothing to write home about. I was horrified, I was shocked, and for the most part of, let's say, six months, if not more, it didn't do anything while the canes were just in the pot. And then, boom, suddenly it came alive. I couldn't believe my luck. So here we go. All I'm doing is irrespective of good roots, bad roots, sticking with the game plan of getting in there. And you know what the bonus would be? Is to get that support out because the orchid doesn't need it anymore. I have no intention of supporting any spikes or growths. I'm full on doing light training as best as possible with these orchids. So if a growth is growing on one side of the orchid, I face it away from the direct source of light, the brightest light source, so that the growths will curve and bend and grow back into the pot. And that is what I've been doing with all the orchids since their arrival. They're probably now getting about six to eight hours of good sun per day. Our temperatures at this time of year are during the day around 28 degrees Celsius. And because of my white facade, well, that's during the day, 28 degrees during the day. And because of my white facade, even when the shade creeps across the east patio, there is so much light, indirect light, the facade does a great job of reflecting even more light. And at night, my temperatures are around 21, 22 degrees. So it's grow time for these orchids. And just like with any other repot when it comes to this media, just because it's inorganic doesn't mean that you can just always go and just up the pot size and fill around the lecker. Now, it's absolutely possible to do that. That's not a big deal. And I was contemplating when I saw what I saw to do exactly that, just up pot her. But, you know, long term, thinking ahead, planning ahead, long term, Ideally, I don't want to be touching this orchid for another two, three years, if not more even. But this vigorous root system, it needs air. In order for the orchid to be happy, it's okay to go in. As you can see from what I had to work with in the beginning, just little stumps, canes, uh, let's just call them stumps, they were some of them even didn't have leaves on them. And then to do this in two years, well, a good cleanup is probably the best course of action here. So that this doesn't 
stagnate the pot in the future. Tightly bound as it is. It's like planting a tree. You want to tease that root system before you plant it so that it doesn't keep circling in and upon itself. Now let's see how that support pulls out. I am mindful of root tips that are up at the top. There we go. Goodbye. Thank you for your service. There came a time throughout the winter when I was dealing with these orchids that I was very concerned because I don't supplement with heat mats or with a heater and the lowest temperatures were 14 degrees but even if they could tolerate that as ambient air what happens in the pot with evaporative cooling because of the setup of Leka and self-watering is that the temperature in the pot is lower than ambient air. I always guesstimate three degrees. So having 14 degrees ambient air, that would make it 11 degrees in the pot. And I'm sorry, even I'm not a happy camper with 11 degrees and my feet being that cold. So these orchids do struggle throughout my winter. Hence my surprise at the beautiful Joe and crossed with puff out of that's blooming. But I did keep the reservoir damp, but only by flushing through the pot. I didn't fill the reservoir up. I didn't fertilize either. There's no need seeing as there's no active growth throughout the winter. So all of that kind of stopped. It was just a matter of keeping the leka damp without, you know, what we would now consider soggy because of how they drink. And there was a moment where in the springtime, it was still just flushing, flushing, clearly no new growths to speak of. But suddenly, it was like a light switch went on. My pots were drier than they've ever, ever been, even though there were no new growth. You could, you could literally, by the consumption of the reservoir, recognize how the orchid was waking up. And then I could just fill in and leave something in the reservoir for them. That was a sign for me, it is go time. And that's when I started with calcium and magnesium and seaweed to help them, you know, get some strength into them after maybe they got weak over the winter. Calcium, magnesium, seaweed, no new growths. So my focus was on if they want to start with a new root system, they've got access to calcium and magnesium. If they want to start with a new growth, and I don't see that yet, they've still got calcium and magnesium to start with new growth. Now that I see new growth, it is full on, full on, the 300 full parts per million going in. Now I have some dead roots here in the center of my root ball that I can see. But I'm going to cringe when I see the editing and I keep touching the root tips here. So even though I have dead roots in the center here, I am not going to be fussing around too much more. Even though I have not removed my fern roots, I will stop fussing as well. But what I am going to do is remove some of the moss at the base here. Now that it's summer, it's not that big a deal, but this stuff is gonna grow back. I would rather it grew back as opposed to choke the base out. If the base is too dark, it could be that the orchid is saying, I'm not getting enough light, doesn't know that it should be growing any new growths. <laughs> so we're gonna expose the base a little bit, get rid of that moss. And if that is a dead root, we can get rid of that as well. There we go. And if I can get even further into this, then... Yeah, that didn't work very well. This is so tight, this root system. It's grabbing onto the fern, and they are too fine to be coming off. Oh, but what a beautiful sight. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it seeing a root system like this where I can go in no fear I can be aggressive about cleaning it up knowing that in no time at all it's going to just bounce back and fill up again fabulous I can be a little bit more radical on this side here now take note if you ever are going to repot your Ancelia Africana if you haven't done it before the roots are fleshy but they're very brittle if you have a zygopedalum or something like that, think about it in those lines. And yet in zygopedalums, we say, oh, don't, you know, the root system is sensitive. What are you doing? They are the same texture, the same kind of structure, but they're not as sensitive. 
you got backup roots going what you want to do is make sure that the pot climate is maintained that is paramount with any repot sometimes to be a little bit too cautious on the root front can pose problems and create issues further down the line so if you feel a spongy root and you're not sure as long as you got roots growing don't worry about cutting off a good root a healthy root the orchid will bounce back my ratio is always when i do this keep two-thirds of the root system on the orchid if you're doing a radical cleanup but remove at least 30 percent of an old root system as best as possible and then you're still within a safe ratio to support the structures that are then going to support new growth plus you've got new roots coming so this is not a stress to the orchid well let me qualify that at this point in time the orchid is probably going what is going on and we're just going to pretend that we're little monkeys scratching away at the surface because you know that is what monkeys and other kind of creatures do where this orchid lives they scratch away at the base they might actually pull off a pseudobulb they might chew on it and then drop it to the floor and well an Anacelia africana can also start growing on the floor that is what we're doing we're just like little monkeys now in nature being rough handling the orchid not having to consider that we're humans and we're panicking about root systems as long as there's enough of the new coming and a ratio of two-thirds remains on the orchid everything is going to be just fine and especially long term now if you're the kind of person that enjoys repotting and want to do it every year then what i'm doing now is not necessary an up pot would have been possible but trust me down the line you will have to do this at some point if you're growing in inorganic media down the line you can only up pot for so many years before well you know you need to keep the aeration going throughout the pot that is paramount as long as you can do that then i suppose up potting you can go indefinitely but it's not something that is a given it cannot be taken for granted We're going to get her bigger pot and what we're going to do is a good rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So I got a little carried away to remove a little bit more moss while I was at it, saw some fern roots. Now, I want to show you what I meant about brittle. These roots appear spongy, all right? This is a viable root, even though it is spongy. In comparison to other orchid roots that we are accustomed to, they would feel firm if they were viable. Not so when it comes to Ancelia africana, all right? Now, I removed this, as I mentioned before, because I want to establish aeration. And you will see in the root ball itself, initially I did a, you know, that, but you will see in the root ball itself how many steely are exposed. So there are dead roots in this root ball right here, what's left of it, but that's fine. I'm not going to go in and start picking them out all separately because, let me show you an example. What appears to be dead, even though a steely is exposed, like in this case right here, exposed steely that root is branching and if i touch it it feels spongy and it would appear to be dead that is across the whole root ball that that could give us the appearance that the roots give us that impression that they're dead but again one classic example not so so we've done as best as we could in my position i'm quite happy with what i've got left here now and the rest is just a matter of getting its pot and getting it potted up Woohoo! One more little dip, 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 seeing as it's summer. Why not? Let's get you a little bit rinsed because of all the debris from chopping it away like that. 
like a Figaro of the Ancelia Africanas. We went from a 15 centimeter pot, we are now going up to a 20 centimeter pot. It is not the next size up. This pot size would be two sizes up, but I have plans and ambitions with this orchid as mentioned earlier. So, because of her thirstiness, it's going to be small lecker for the entire pot. Top to bottom. This will give a maximum amount of wicking for a pot this size and it will also be perfect for the orchid to continue to grow and thrive. Well, there you go. How about that then for a perfect fit? Perfect height. Now, because we've been so nasty to the root system throughout this entire repot, we are now going to be very, very gentle and let the water deal with the distribution of the leka. This way the leka doesn't bash right onto the root tips. It literally just falls and pulls into place depending where there is a gap. The shaking, the jiggling of the pot afterwards is also going to be so much more gentle. And you may have noticed I positioned my orchid into the middle of the pot because I don't want to be doing this again. Maybe for three years. I keep extending the time frame, but you know, the idea being not to disturb for as long as possible. So she's in the middle, even though she appears to have a direction of growth. It's not the case with this one. I have three separate canes in here. They're all doing their own thing. They all started somewhere in the middle. So her growth pattern is not in one direction. It's like all the way around. And I'd like to encourage that. All right, we give her a shake and see what settles in around and then we'll drain the pot and see if we need to fill up with a little bit more leka. And because it's such a big pot, I have two microfibers at the base. So everything here is poised for the maximum yield, let's say, let's say maximum growth potential. We've encouraged all of that. It's literally, well, not just up to the orchid now. I have to do my part as well, but basically, that's it. That's all there is to it. So one more flush through. Get some of the runoff. The runoff is plain RO water at this point. She's had everything she needed leading up to this repot. So when this reservoir has been absorbed, I am going in with 300 parts per million. Even though throughout the cleanup, I still haven't seen any new growth, but those roots, they are a go and we're going to encourage those. Everybody say cheese! <laughs> and Celia Africana family photo with our two stars of the show, literally. There we go. The blooms, the first ones ever here on my patio. And our repot, let it grow. The intention being that the other two here will one day go into a pot that size. But they can stay in their pots, as far as I'm concerned, for another year. It's the root system that will call the shots. If you have watched this whole video, thank you so very, very much. Also, if you have any questions, comments are there for a reason. Especially if my train of thoughts went into one direction of tracks, whereas it should have come back and taken the other section off into a different direction. Please let me know in the comments and I shall be very happy to elaborate as to what I was meaning and saying before I went onto the wrong tracks. <laughs> Appreciate your time so much. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though that you please stay safe and take care. Bye!